What? what? Uh, my name is Justin Ng, and I've been going to the church for 12 days. That's it. 12 days? Really? Oh, it's like been like, what, like three months. Three months. Oh. It's been like three months, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what brought you here to live in faith? Uh, the potlucks. Okay. The pot, I mean, keep it real. Yeah. I mean, I hope you're not trying to take my spot when it comes down to potluck. No, you already beat me there. Okay, I'm just. Uh, the reason I'm here is uh, due to Royal Rangers and the need in the ministry and um, just the upcoming commanders and the boys that want to get involved. So, my role, my responsibility is to uh, help Rangers grow in this church. So, what is that? What is that passion that you have for Rangers? Uh, the passion that drives me is um, I was involved in Rangers as a young boy, and that was a seed that was planted in my heart. And uh, that seed, no matter what I did in life and the choices that I made to walk away from God, that grew familiar that once I knew that there was nothing else left for me in this world, that I turned back to the first thing that brought me to God. And it was Rangers, and that's where I'm here now. Wow, wow. So you, you, you're saying that that was a period of time in your life where you kind of strayed away. But something brought you back. What was that something, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, that's something got me to the place in where I almost, you know, I was almost killed at, at some point. Um, I made choices my whole life to, to run away from God and choices to deal drugs and get involved in gangs. And I did everything to walk away and to get further from Him and the ministry that He had called from my life. And no matter what I did, He was always there at every turn. And every turn, He was there to save me. And, and every time that frustrated me, it made me more angry to go further and it got to the point where I almost died and I realized that there was nothing left in this world for me to do and nothing that would bring accomplishment or anything to be honored by and I knew at that point that God did have something for me that it was nothing to run away from but to run to. And, and it really just really just seemed to me and it oozed out of you that you have this great belief that through Royal Rangers, you can actually touch young men and actually give them that same thing that you were given when you went through your hard times. Because you said you went back to it. You know, as you as, as things start to go wrong in your life and you start to get in more trouble, you kept on remembering where you was at, who Christ was, and then the impact that the Royal Rangers ministry had on you. And you believe that this is the same thing that can impact young men. Absolutely. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Royal Rangers. So you're saying Royal Rangers is necessary? It, it saved my life, and that's why I'm here today. So the next question I have for you is, what do you expect the Young Adult Ministry to bring to your life? Uh, I expect the young, <laughs> the young Adult Ministry to um, you know, bring a challenge, to challenge me to, to do better than what I'm doing right now, to not say that you know where I'm at is the best that I can be but that there's a greater place and a greater calling that God has for me, that the ministry I'm involved in right now is not where it's at, that there's something greater that God's working up for my life. And for people to challenge me that have been there and done that, and uh, to help me get to that next level. And better potlucks. Better potlucks, I agree with that. Yeah. So, what is one of your greatest accomplishments? Mm, waking up this morning and dressed. I mean, that, I mean, it sounds funny, but it's actually... That's the truth. Yeah. It is the truth. I agree yeah. with that. I agree with that. And it's I whatever think, smells good. It wasn't worn yesterday. It's what I put on for work. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, I'm serious. So, uh, so uh, aside from the potlucks and things of that nature, what drives you every single day? My car. <laughs> Uh, aside, aside from the car. Uh, what drives me every day? Um, you know, it's, it's hard because I, I think about it. You know, there's times where I don't want to wake up. There's times where I don't want to go to work and I don't want to do anything because I live in Tampa myself. My family's not even here. And so every day to get up and to push myself further, it is hard. The only thing that drives me is honestly my relationship with God. If I didn't have that, I... I wouldn't have a cause to be alive. And and like I said, it's it's really oozing out of you. And one thing I would say to you is that God has that purpose for you, and that purpose is to really impact the lives of young men. And I and I truly believe that for you. And 
my question to you is, do you believe God has revealed that to you already? Do you believe that what you've been through as a young man, going through the games, going through the, 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 the selling of drugs and things like that, that challenge young men today, the, or should I say the proving of manhood, or should I say the passage of, of manhood, do you feel that God has brought you in this gap to say, you know what, I'm going to teach young men a different passage of manhood. I'm going to teach them a, a different way to be a man rather than what society has taught them. Because in the Christian church, you don't really see too much or avenue where they say, I'm going to help you be a man. I'm going to help you understand yourself as a man. I'm going to help you feel confident, more challenged, and even overcome some things. But the streets, you know for a fact that the streets will tell him how to be a man and give him this false confidence of being a man. Do you feel like God has placed you in this gap to say, you know what? Now it's time to show my men how to be men. Oh, absolutely, without a doubt. Um, because of my fatherlessness and, and my dad not being there for me, the streets was the first thing that, that hit my heart and hit me. And I grew up faster than I should have. And I feel my calling is to hit those boys where I got attacked and where I grew up on the streets. Because the streets is the first thing to tell you, you need to grow up and man up, otherwise you get eaten up first. And I want to be there to be the father to the fatherless boys and, and cap, capture them and capture their hearts for God before they even get to that point. I, I really feel like um, God is God is really, really having an agenda for his men and he he's not going to let the enemy take his men. And I believe you are one of the forerunners for this right here. Thank you. To teach men how to truly be men and not allow BET, the streets, CNN, MSNBC to teach men how to be men. And, and I'm, I'm glad just to hear you and see you here. So don't ever feel like that, you know, sometimes, you know, it, it, everything, you know, certain things are going for granted, but those kids watch you, they believe in you, and most definitely God said, this is where you're at. This is where I want you to be. And that change is gonna happen. And that brings me to my last question. Where do you see yourself in five years? YOLO. Um, <laughs> uh, in five years, um, I'll be enlisted in the, in the military, so I'll be overseas. Wow, awesome, awesome. Appreciate that. Praise you, holy God, sweet salvation. But I remember nights when I would go astray. But you preserve my faith by giving me grace.